We all live inside a bubble, right? This is our world. We go to church here. We work over here. We go get our coffee over here. We go to this park over here. We usually go over here to, you know, hang out with friends. This is our favorite club. This is our world. This is our favorite spot on the beach. We all live in this bubble. What you got to do to get the life that God wants you to have, you got to put more air in your bubble. You got to blow your bubble up. Expand yourself. Take yourself out your comfort zone. Do not live in your bubble. Put some more air in your bubble. If you stay in your comfort zone, that's where you will fail. You will fail in your comfort zone. Success is not a comfortable procedure. It is a very uncomfortable thing to attempt. So you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable if you ever want to be successful. Start putting some pressure on. Put some pressure on yourself. Get out here and get about it. Look, I'd love to sugarcoat this thing for you. I'd love to tell you, look, you can go out here and get rich, do a couple of things. That ain't, that ain't happening. Rich people don't sleep eight hours a day. That's a third of your life. It ain't but 24 hours in a day. You cannot be sleep eight hours a day. You can't live in LA and wake up at eight o'clock in the morning. It's 11 o'clock on the East Coast. The stock market been open two hours. They already making decisions about your life and your ass will sleep. The Bible says, he who loves to sleep and the folding of hands, poverty will set upon you like a thief in the night. He who loves to sleep and the folding of hands, poverty will set upon you like a thief in the night. There is a blessing in everything. Behind every moment of adversity in your life, there is a blessing and a lesson. Every moment of adversity has those two things. Pain always leaves a gift. Always. It, it's not going to change for you. You ever seen a flea? One of the smallest insects. Really small. One of the smallest insects. But for his height and size, and flea has the highest vertical leap in nature for an insect. A flea can jump, has a 36 inch vertical. A flea, man, can come 36 inches off the ground. His vertical is 36. The average person can't do that. But a flea can jump 36 inches off the ground. If you capture the flea and you put him in a mayonnaise jar and you put the lid on it, the flea know one thing. I got a 36 inch vertical. So here he go. He start jumping, but he gonna hit himself on that lid cause he got that lid on it. But after a while, after getting knocked down so many times, the flea makes an adjustment. So now the flea only jumps just to where he don't get knocked back down. He got 36 vertical, but since this lid is on, his environment got him now jumping nowhere near what he can. Capture some more fleas and put them in there. They got 36 verticals, but then they start jumping. They find out they keep getting knocked down. They start doing what the other fleas is doing. Next thing you know, I got a jar full of fleas and they ain't even using a 36 inch vertical cause they got a lid on the jar. Them fleas have babies. Them babies is born into the conditions of the environment. So now guess what? The flea is born with a 36 inch vertical, but because he see his mama and daddy and all his cousins and friends jumping just barely to the roof, you know what he do? He duplicates that behavior. The flea never reaches his potential. Until you take the top off of your mayonnaise jar, you're going to duplicate your surroundings. If you take an oak tree seed and you put it in a two foot pot, that seed will never become the oak tree that oak trees are capable of becoming because it's going to get stifled by the two foot pot. Now check this out, ain't nothing wrong with the seed. The seed just fell prey to the environment. Don't you allow your environment to dictate the oak tree that you become. Because ain't nothing wrong with your seed. All of y'all got this wonderful gift that he gave you at birth. All y'all got one, you better believe that now. Don't die with this gift and don't never use it. All of y'all got this wonderful gift. 
but you got to use it. Take your seed, take your gift. Get away from these people that's in your life that ain't doing nothing. Get away from people in your life that's hating. Get away from your family members that ain't ever opened a business. That ain't, get away from your family members that ain't ever followed their dream. Get away from your family members that ain't never been nowhere but to the family reunion. They ain't never been to a beach. Get away from them. I'm fortunate enough to be on top, but anytime you reach the top, you always want to make sure that you have the desire to raise the bar and take the brass ring to places it's never been. That's the key with being on top. Just because it's never been done doesn't mean it can't be done. And in terms of competition, great question. Everyone's my competition, but a fundamental key that I've learned over the years is, and I'll share it with you, my number one competition is me. It's always you versus you. You got to be the one to get up every morning, be disciplined, put in the consistent daily hard work because that gains success. No coach, no trainer, no mentor, uh, no boss can do it. You versus you. You reach that point, you know, we all reach that point where we're training and you break through to the other side. You break down barriers, you bust through ceilings, you knock down doors. Uh, that just happened for me. It's very defining where you had your goals set for months or for years and you accomplish it. I made a promise to the Fast and Furious franchise, to myself, that for this Hobbs spinoff, the Fast and Furious spinoff with Jason Statham, I was coming in the best shape of my life. And today was a breakthrough day. Look, I've been slaying iron since I was 13, ever since we got, we got kicked off the island of Hawaii for not being able to afford to pay rent while I was crying. <laughs> I don't want, I have no place to live. I told myself, shut up, stop crying like a little bitch. Get in the gym and make something of yourself. Break, that's why I need therapy. Break through that other side. Come on. Today, very intense workout, hardcore, very heavy. Uh, creating and destroying, breaking down and building up that very dense, thick muscle. Uh, all this is fake sweat, by the way. I just pour water on my head. Uh, I want to share a sentiment with you that I just heard from a very good friend of mine. His name is Phil Heath. Uh, a lot of you guys out there know he is the reigning Mr. Olympia heavyweight. And will go down in bodybuilding as one of the greatest of all time. Possibly the greatest of all time. We always talk about hunger and how you always want to outwork your competition regardless of how successful you may be lucky enough to be. You want to be hungry. If you know what it's like to be hungry, you'll never be full. He said it's one thing to be hungry, it's another thing when you're starving for greatness and starving for success. And I love that because it immediately clicked. It's in my DNA. I know what it's like to operate every single day regardless of the success that I've been a lucky son of a bitch to achieve. I operate every day as if I'm starving, so keep starving and keep pouring fake sweat on your body. <laughs> the first philosophy that I want to share with you guys in our big Forbes takeover is the power of choice. Life is about choices. We're making choices every single day, some big choices, some little choices, but oftentimes it's the big choices that can be scariest because we know the ramifications are hardcore if it goes south and it doesn't work out. So in my case, uh, 10 years ago, I was told, if you want to make it in this business, you got to be like Tom Cruise and Will Smith. They're the two biggest movie stars on the planet. And that just didn't sit right with me in my gut. And I thought, well, I can't be like anybody else. i got to be myself. Um, and I made a choice not to be like those guys and be myself. And by the way, there was no blueprint. That's why it was so scary. It's not like, okay, well, here's the blueprint for the half black, half Samoan pro wrestler who was throwing around 300 pound men for a living. Ten years later, things have worked out and I'm enjoying some good success today. But it was the power of that choice that changed my career. The power of the choice to be yourself and be real. So Forbes takeover, power of choice. Make that choice. We have an anchoring motto, an anchoring saying, which is always be the hardest workers in the room. And it's just a reminder that regardless of how successful we may be or how successful we're not, but we want to be, we always want to be the hardest workers in the room. It always leads with hard work. There's no substitution for hard work. Thus, working out at 11 o'clock at night when I know my competition is asleep. All right, guys, the next philosophy and anchor that I want to share with you guys on this big Forbes takeover day is the power of teamwork and the importance of surrounding yourself with the right group of hungry individuals. So years ago, I wanted to be more than just an actor for hire. I wanted to be a producer. I wanted to be a good producer. I wanted to learn and understand the producing side of the business. I teamed up with Danny Garcia, who, who of course brings her brilliant business acumen and, and invaluable insight to the table. And we formed Seven Bucks Productions. But in order for that to be a successful company, we have to have the right team around us. Sat down with Ari Emanuel at WME. Then we hooked up with Brad Slater, our number one ace, Patrick Weitzel, Jason Hodes, the entire company since then. 
Uh, with having that team of people around us, Seven Bucks Productions have become, has become a robust company, and we are kicking ass. So if you want to find success and achieve greatness, surround yourself with the right group of people who are hungry, who are willing to work just as hard as you. Forbes take over the power of teamwork. All right, the next philosophy, the next anchor that I want to share with you guys for our big Forbes takeover today is the power of vision and the importance of having great clarity with that vision because the more clear that we are with our vision, the greater our chances for success. Now, how it applies to me and my career, about five, six years ago, I wanted to come up with a way that bucked the traditional system and I wanted to connect directly with fans in a real and in an authentic way that just wasn't being done. And I felt social media was that. And I was met with criticism because they were saying, well, listen, there are no more powerful mediums in radio and television. And since then, we've changed the game. And what we're doing right now has become the number one asset to any marketer, studio, and network. So when we sit in these marketing meetings, the number one thing is DJ social media. And then radio and television uh, will follow. So